Our next speaker is Dr. Richard Bernstein. He's uh, uh, going to talk about increasing low carb, high fat diet, and diabetes. Um, I'm going to have to read his um, uh, bio here because uh, it's fairly incredible. He had uh, type 1 diabetes for 64 years, since uh, age 12. Uh, he'd been an engineer for 24 years when, in 1969, he invented the concept of blood sugar self-monitoring using some newly developed equipment. With the help of multiple daily blood sugars, he was able to normalize his own but only following a very low cal by only following a very low calorie diet and ba pardon me oh sorry low carb diet uh, and basal and bolus insulin dosing through many of his low t uh, long term diabetic complications reversed with normal blood sugars medical journals ridiculed his observations and refused publication he therefore went to medical school at age 45 and has published six books and many articles on the treatment of diabetes and obesity. His medical practice in New York is limited to the treatment of these two disorders. Uh, he's director emeritus of the peripheral, peripheral vascular disease clinic at Albert Einstein College of Medicine and is a fellow in the American College of Nutrition, American College of Clinical Endocrinologists, and the American College of Certified Wound Care Specialists. And we're privileged to uh, hear him talk today. He, uh, although there are no slides in your book, he's going to, uh, um, he doesn't need slides to give his talk. I, I think I can hold this. Okay. I, I do weightlifting, so uh, it right. shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> um, my talk is divided into two halves. The first half is uh, sort of a story. Uh, we can call it an experiment. And uh, many of you will be able to predict the outcome. About 15 years ago, well, first, and w by the way, background. Uh, since I treat diabetics, my goal with each patient is to give them normal blood sugars. Normal blood sugars would be about 83 milligram per deciliter before, during, and after eating uh, with a net result of a hemoglobin A1C uh, of about 4.2 to 4.6 percent. <clears throat> now, uh, about 15 years ago, I had at the same time four patients who were trying to gain weight. I find it very easy to uh, get weight off of diabetics, but this was quite a challenge to uh, put weight on. <clears throat> Typical patient was a uh, fellow uh, in his late 60s who comes in with his wife. He's a tall, thin guy, and he looks like death. His blood sugars are running about 400, and uh, she says, you've got to put weight on him. Well, I knew that if I uh, gave him insulin and got his blood sugars down, he'd stop peeing away calories and he'd gain weight. So I said, sure, all we have to do is correct his blood sugars and he'll gain weight. And uh, about a month later, he's walking around with normal blood sugars, but his wife says, he's still too thin. So what am I going to do? Now, remember, there were three others with more or less the same problem. I'm focusing on this one guy because it's just easy to <laughs> uh, discuss one person at a time. So I said to myself, what am I going to do? One sure way of gaining weight is to give him more carbo and a lot more insulin. The trouble is, 
we won't be able to control his blood sugars. The more carbo, the more insulin, the more unpredictability you get. So I'm not going to offer him that option. But giving him more protein and a little more insulin will work. So I offer that to each of these people. By the way, a fifth one crept into the act. It was my 95-year-old aunt in Florida. Uh, she was complaining that she was wasting away, she was too skinny. So she was going to present her own problem. Now, what do these people say to me when I gave them that offer of more protein and, and a little more insulin? I'm getting enough to eat. I can't eat anymore. Well, that really posed the problem. So I got a brilliant, what I thought was a brilliant idea. We'll give these people pure fat. And we don't want to upset their doctors. And in those days, all the doctors were keen on olive oil. That was the magic potion. Uh, uh, they were especially keen on uh, extra virgin olive oil, not knowing, of course, that extra virgin olive oil is very readily oxidized in the bottle and can, in theory at least, pose its own problems. So we gave these people olive oil. I gave them uh, a shot glass twice a day. That was two ounces twice a day, which uh, uh, comes to 120 grams of fat. Uh, one gram is how many calories? 10 calories? Nine calories, okay. So what's nine times 120? It's a little over 1,000 calories extra per day. Now, the initial problem was that they weren't appreciating the taste of the olive oil. So I had to figure out, what do I add to the olive oil to make it taste good? I messed around with um, uh, the baking flavors in the baking aisle, you know, orange and uh, 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 whatever they had. And we weren't getting very f far with the baking flavors. Then I got a brilliant idea. There was a flavor in the baking aisle, rum flavor, and it reminded me of Meyer's dark rum. And I tried giving them a 50-50 mix of uh, olive oil and Meyer's dark rum, and they all loved it. <laughs> the first dropout was my aunt because she started getting drunk. <laughs> so we could call that a failure. <clears throat> Anyway, I gave these people this concoction for uh, six months, looking for really great weight, weight gain. Not one person gained one pound in six months. I couldn't understand it. So I called Sam Seifter, who was the head of biochemistry at my medical school. I knew that he specialized in uh, carbo and fat metabolism. So I figured he had an answer. He couldn't give me an answer. Uh, however, he said he'd look around, he'd ask his friends. He got back to me after maybe a month or so. No one has the answer. So I just stowed that information away. Uh, I was not successful in putting weight on these people um, because my usual method of adding, of giving them more protein and more insulin uh, was turned down at the very beginning by these people. So for years, I didn't know the answer to this mystery until April 2000, where there's uh, an article that I think we put in the syllabus that I discovered in the journal Diabetes. And this was a report on a very interesting study. They took 10 non-diabetic men, 